Grey Rivers wooden bridge on the Reefton Greymouth Highway is due for replacement. It served the West Coast for 58 years. Today they're going to open the new bridge, an 800-foot steel and concrete structure costing £110,000. It was built in just 18 months, half the estimated time. The Minister of Works, Mr Watts, is here to open it. Two local axemen continue the ceremony by chopping through a log that bars the way. The ribbon cut, Mr and Mrs Watts cross the new bridge in the old-fashioned West Coast way. And at the end of the bridge is a metal plaque commemorating the old local name. Now there is a bigger big grey bridge. Deep in the vaults of a Dunedin bank, a pot of liquid gold comes from the fire. In the heyday of gold mining, many New Zealand banks had their own assayers. Today, Mr Ted Ashby, who works in the vault, tests most New Zealand gold. He is the last bank assayer in New Zealand. Having moulded the raw gold bar, he takes out his testing sample and weighs it on his delicate balance, accurate to a hundredth of a milligram. This gives him the weight of the gold plus impurities. In the old days, the banks on the west coast, Thames and Otago goldfields all employed assayers, but Ted Ashby is the last one. He refines the sample by melting it with lead in a gas furnace. At high temperatures, most of the impurities soak into the lead and the gold floats to the top like a bright, clean button. However, boiling nitric acid is needed to take out any silver and purify the gold completely. Ted Ashby succeeded his father in this job. He's been doing it for 40 years. Every year he handles over 300,000 pounds worth. Finally, the pure gold goes back on the balance to be weighed again. It will be slightly lighter now the impurities have gone. Mr Ashby can calculate the percentage of impurity in the raw gold bar. From that he works out on the huge bullion balance that this small gold bar is worth exactly 954 pounds 11 shillings. This river is power. Since 1929, its waters have been generating electricity for the North Island. Even here at Mercer, as it nears the sea, the Waikato is used to cool the steam generating system at Merry Merry Power Station. Merry Merry's boilers are heated by coal, some of it brought by cableway from Maramarua, some of it by rail from Huntley. Every day the trains rumble into Merry Merry to unload their black cargo as the year-old station feeds 90,000 kilowatts of electricity into the national grid. No one swings a shovel here. Trucks are emptied without waste of manpower. Upstream, the Waikato cuts through the land like a knife and starting at Karapiro, the dams go up the river like steps. Grandfather of all the hydro stations on the river is Arapuni. For 30 years, its generators have been turning. If Arapuni was once lonely, it has no lack of neighbours now. Upstream, a new dam is under construction at Waipapa. Up to now, dams on the river have been made largely of concrete. Waipapa will be a massive ramp of earth and rock 200 yards long. Three generators are to be housed here and are due to operate by 1961. The wild river that once the Maoris knew has been tamed. Upstream again, Maritai's Lake is tree shaded in the winter sun and the broad white bulk of Wakamaru dams the river back for 14 miles 
to the very face of the newest power station, Otto Muri. Here the water is still and Pahutaroa looks out over a new lake. Three of Atomuri's four generators are in operation and in a few months the dam will be producing at its full capacity of 80,000 kilowatts. At Oakuri, another earth dam. The familiar pattern of hydro construction makes its mark on the land. Diversion channel, powerhouse foundations, pens docks. When this dam is full and Oakuri's powerhouse is humming, the Waikato will be generating 40 times more power than it was when Arapuni was a baby. Geothermal steam powers Wairaki's station. Here, close to Lake Tapo, the river is used not to generate, but to cool the steam system. In the South Island, the construction village of Otamatata huddles under bleak mountains. In the Waitaki Valley, 20 miles from nowhere, this is the site of the Benmore hydroelectric scheme, the biggest single power project yet undertaken in New Zealand. 6,000 people will make their homes here until the dam is completed in 1965. The huge earth structure will front a lake 30 square miles in area and the powerhouse will generate half a million kilowatts. In the north and in the south, the great projects take shape. For a few years, men come to these lonely places, dig and gouge, tear the earth open, close it up again and build a dam to cover the scar. For miles behind, the lakes lie as the generators turn. The demand for power is never-ending. <laughs>